Hi guys, welcome to part two of my Dora build video series. This is the 172nd scale Dora railgun from Hobby Boss. In the last video I built up these four corners of the gun, each of which consists of the two rail cars and the kind of um, carrier piece on top. And I found a piece of wood big enough to lay down the track beds. In this video I'm going to be building the majority of the large parts of the kit, starting with the two side panels here which provide support for everything else. So before I begin, a quick thank you to Scale Models HQ who supplied this kit to me, and a reminder that you can get 10% off purchases from their website using the code MN10 at checkout. Before I moved on to the main body of the Dora, I had a few small tasks to do on these rail cars that I built last time. I used some AK putty to get rid of that seam line down the side there, sanding it back once it was dry, and then that enabled me to add the last few details on the side of these rail cars. These are all quite fragile, but these cars can be put aside until literally the end of the build process now. The carrier pieces here with the, uh, the black mesh on top have a couple of boxes that go on top. You have to select and orientate these carefully because they are handed. The two holes in the PE top are for the box to go in and they should go towards the inside of the uh, railgun. Unfortunately the alignment pins are not quite central on the boxes which means you can put them in one of two ways, as you can see here. There's a small difference there in their distance from the edge of the rail car. I'm not quite sure which is correct, so I didn't glue them in right now, just in case one of them would cause a problem with any future pieces to be added. With that out of the way, I can move on to the main side pieces. And they come molded as this giant piece here, with a good amount of detail already molded onto the outside. The part designation is there in the inside, FL. There's a second piece here which fits fairly nicely in and completes that. However, one thing I did need to be aware of is this seam line all around this side panel. For best fit, that needs to be scraped or sanded back. Even with that done though, there are a few small gaps around the inside, mainly in the corners, so it was out with the AK putty again, applying it with a uh, cocktail stick. And once that putty has dried for a few minutes, you can just gently wipe it away with a cotton bud. There is a good amount of detail already on these side panels, but there's also some to be added. We've got these six uh, vertical brace pieces. And lots of small boxes, electrical junction boxes, things like that that get added as well. There's great detail here and I really feel like these uh, bolts and everything will, will look very good once they've been painted and weathered. One of the more time consuming jobs is adding these small handles. As you can see they're tiny and there are literally hundreds of these. They go all the way along the side inside and outside on both pieces. The easiest way I found to apply these was to use a cocktail stick to apply some super glue and then rather than using tweezers pick up each piece with a small amount of blue tack, drop it into place and then just remove the blue tack by holding the piece with a knife. I found that easier than tweezers because tweezers do tend to make things ping across the room. It's not a difficult job, but it is time consuming. This is one side done. 
Of course, you've got to try to make sure they're aligned on the uh, horizontal so they're not all over the place in relation to each other. Luckily, the kit comes with lots of plastic bags, which are great for holding these spare pieces while I wait to do the other side. We do have a walkway piece that goes alongside here as well. I left that off until now because it will be quite easily damaged. It fits very well in there. And it then has the photo etch um, foot plates to go in. I used a sheet of glass to put the photo etch on for cutting. If you cut the photo etch on a regular cutting mat, it tends to bend it a little bit at the edges rather than giving you a nice straight sharp edge. Again, I found a cocktail stick a really helpful tool for applying super glue around the edges, just dropping the piece into place. Each of these pieces is individually numbered, but they did look pretty similar to me. Nevertheless, I, I did follow the instructions to get them in the right order. I think that looks really good. I can imagine some manufacturers in this scale would just include the walkways, a solid piece of plastic with some texture, but this photo edge looks excellent. I'm really happy with that. The next piece up was these uh, sort of strange um, bracing pieces that go between the two sides of the gun. There's four of them to make. There are two subtly different types, the C and the D types. One thing I noticed on the sprues here is that a lot of very thick connection points. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, it didn't make cutting these out any easier. I did also notice on this point, we've got the pins here for alignment, but if you look at them, they don't quite line up with the holes in the piece. This is definitely the correct way for them to go. So I just solved this by cutting off one of those tabs. There's quite a nice articulation system here with a bolt that drops through the top and another piece that comes in from the other side. The instructions don't explicitly say not to glue these, but I did try to glue only the two halves of the bolt together because being able to move these pieces will make it much easier when you get them fitting to the model. Here's one of the four finished pieces and you can see you've got several points of articulation. If we put it down on the desk, this is how the two halves are supposed to meet together. And we have the two side pieces at either side of these. They simply attach with these very clear slots. And this is why the articulation is very helpful, as you can imagine uh, here. This is going to be one of the pieces which I will leave off for now and paint separately, because as I'm sure you can imagine, there's lots of nooks and crannies around here. It's going to be very hard to get paint into those. So I'll leave that off until the initial painting is done. The other thing that separates the two halves of the uh, Dora are these cube-like boxes. These are made of just two pieces. They attach to the side like so. And this was a good lesson in making sure everything is nice and clean and tidy. You see this small little nub here on the side piece. Not very big at all, less than a millimeter. But if you take a look at the box as it joins, you can see it doesn't quite sit flush. And of course, if it's not flush, that's going to cause a big problem when those two long side pieces are together. They're supposed to be in parallel and they're going to be ever so slightly out. And that's the kind of error which is going to propagate if we don't get rid of it. So just a little bit of sanding, then you can see it sits much more flush. Here's the whole mechanism together with the bracing pieces and the box. And of course, we've got the same thing at the rear as well. So moving on to the gun itself, this is the breech, I think. Um, the instructions here say that we have to put these big level fittings in. 
uh, which I think is probably just a, a slightly bad translation, and basically means these weights that we can see here. I'm guessing these go in to provide a nice counterweight because that gun barrel is long and heavy. And in fact, not only do we add the weights here, but in the second part, a whole ton of weight goes inside. I didn't bother gluing these in place. The instructions say use CA glue to glue them, but um, they're so tightly packed, they're not gonna move around in there anyway. With a lot of these parts, I prefer to get them stuck together before doing the cleanup. I find that helps get a much smoother, flatter finish on the edges. When you think about the fact that this is in 172nd scale, you get an idea of just how large it is. If you imagine a 172nd scale figure here, it would be absolutely tiny compared to this. The gun barrel itself has three main sections, each in two parts. We have this section here, which is closest to the breech. Again, none of those uh, sprue gates there interfere with the edges when I'm joining them. So I leave them in place, get everything glued together and lined up, and then I can sand off both sides at once. I just find that helps me avoid any dimples or anything in the barrel by sanding down one side slightly more than the other. A useful thing to do though when you're gluing the two sides together is to put them into the next section and that will help ensure they are nice and tightly held. I put some Tamiya tape around them as well to keep them in place but no, putting them where you know they're going to go is uh, also quite helpful. And actually I forgot one section here, there's a fourth section. This is the section that connects to the vehicle itself. So you can imagine just how large this barrel is going to be. I'm not quite sure what mechanism Hobby Boss use, it's not clear from the instructions, to, um, to keep this gun in place and also to allow you to position it without it swinging freely up or down. The barrel itself is mounted onto these sections here. It took me a while to realize that the part numbers are not on the sprue for some reason here. Instead, they're molded on the inside of the pieces themselves. If we take the two halves and just dry fit them together, you can see there's quite a few small gaps. Those are easily eradicated. It's just because the pieces have a small amount of flash around a lot of the edges. So a sanding stick over those, just even just one or two swipes of that, I got rid of those. Just like the main large side pieces, there's lots of small additions to add here. Handles and boxes and so on. For quite a few of the large pieces in this build video, I haven't put all the small details on because they'll be quite easily knocked off during the rest of the build process. Put the handles here because they're out of the way. But in the next video, that's when I'll put lots of the detail on. The final large section that needs building is the platform that goes at the back and it has this sort of uh, box or room hanging down from below it. I didn't quite follow the order of the instructions here. I put this walkway piece onto the bottom of the box first before putting the PE in place. I guess I could have molded these doors or windows open but I'm not quite sure what's supposed to go in this, this container so uh, I didn't see much point of that but maybe I should have done. The photo etch is very similar to the main walkway. Lots of small individual pieces, very nicely done indeed. They're going to look really good when they're painted up and uh, scuffed a bit to look like they're uh, bare metal. That box hangs between two of these beams here. 
Before I can glue these pieces together, we need to get rid of those ejector pin marks because they will still be visible on the final model. The other thing to realize is that this is open-ended and I can't see anything in the instructions that shows you to close it off. So I'm going to need to paint the inside of this black before I put the two sides together. I might even put some kind of blanking plate there just to stop you staring all the way down the inside of this piece. It will be more towards the top of the model, so sort of in the eyesight line of the viewer. So I don't want it to look ugly with those, uh, those joining pins in the way. The instructions suggest to put these thin metal bars in between these two larger beams. And then the box I made previously hangs off the bottom of that. I did things a bit differently and I decided to attach the beams directly to the top of the box, glue them in place and then I could attach that to the beams later. Right, so that's the majority of the larger components finished, so let's take a look at everything dry fitted together. As you can see, this thing is absolutely huge. This is just one angle, so of course you can't see all the detail at the back, but it's absolutely enormous. And of course we've got the rail cars that I built last time to go underneath this as well. You might have noticed that I've stuck to the larger components in this build. I haven't put a lot of the small railings and handles and things like that on just because they're very likely to get damaged in the build process. So I'll keep those off for as long as possible. But there isn't actually that much plastic left. We've taken parts of all the sprues. Some only have a few pieces like this left, a few sort of uh, walkways and panels, a few railings, ladders, a couple of shelves here. But this is the entire pile of plastic that's left. It's not a lot compared to what I showed you at the beginning. So this, of course, is how it's going to break down. I've taken the uh, barrel out. All of these pieces are going to be kept separate for painting, I think. It's going to be too hard to paint them together. And of course, you should note that I've only shown you detailing one half of the vehicle. So here, for example, I put the detailing on this piece, but I haven't yet done it on the other half. Similarly with the main side pieces, this one I've got most of the detail except the railings. On the other one I've got no detail added whatsoever yet. So still quite a lot of time consuming work to do. This isn't actually a particularly complicated kit. It is just a time consuming kit, uh, mainly because the barrel is about the only thing that's made um, in the singular. Everything else you make two, four, eight, or even 16 times in some cases. So it is a case of do something and then do it many times over. Still, it's been quite a good fun kit actually. I've enjoyed it so far. I think in the next video, I'll be adding those small details and then thinking about how I'm going to paint this and how I'm going to mask off some of those contact areas. Because of course, what you don't want is for you to be gluing paint to paint, painted surface to painted surface. Of course, what I also need to think about is what colour to paint this thing. At the moment, my choices are German Grey, XF63, XF65 Field Grey, XF22 RLM Grey, or a combination of some of those paints. I'm leaning towards German Grey with a little bit of Field Grey in it, but I'm not quite sure yet. So guys, as I said, that's quite a lot of work for me to do on the other half of this. So my next video won't be about the Dora, it will be a different subject. But of course the video after that will be the Dora, and as I say, hopefully we'll get a lot of paint down at that point. But of course the video after that will be the Dora. So before I go, let me say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. And if you want to find out more about Patreon, you can find a link on the screen or in the description below. Thank you for watching, I hope to see you in the next video, and until then, have fun modelling.